Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice, and we will be glad in it. We are so glad tonight to welcome you to the Atlanta Live Show right here on Channel 57. You need to contact your friends. You need to share this with your friends. You need to call your friends. Call your friends. Call your enemies, because this is going to be a great show. I promise you the next hour of your life will be radically transformed if you'll give God an hour. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. We're going to have great singing, incredible guests tonight. This is going to be a day of great famous things happening in the kingdom of God. We believe that the Lord is for us. We believe that no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. And I just want you to know that God has a great plan for your life. You say, well, Pastor, I'm going through the hardest place I've ever been through in my life. But I want you to understand, as the Apostle Paul said, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed. We believe great glory is coming. We believe the rest of our life is going to be the best of our life. We believe great days are in front of us. We believe the best time of our life is right now because this is the time, come on somebody, for the kingdom of God, for the glory of God to manifest like never. The whole earth is searching for the sons of men to be manifest, for the sons of God to be manifest. And we just believe tonight is going to help your life and change your life. We want to go straight into music tonight, phenomenal music. Jason and April Parlor, you can't be stopped. Glory to God. Amen.
Praise God. Nothing can stop our God. Glory to God. If you, you quit praising, if you don't stop praising, the miracles will happen. Amen? Amen. There's nothing impossible with our God. Amen. The wonderful singing. We can't wait. There's going to be great, great worship, great more music as the show goes on. And, and I tell you, folks, that you are in tune for some tremendous, stay tuned right here for some tremendous two men, a father and a son, Carl and Brandon Gallops. I just met, and we it seemed like we've been knowing each other for our whole life, and it's just a great time. <laughs> And I tell you, I'm just, I can't wait for you to hear him. You probably know Carl. He's been on this show numerous times. And I just believe that the Lord is going to do great things tonight. I cannot wait for you to hear about this book. This book, he told me the title and told me a lot about it. In the green room, I'm telling you, you're going to be freaked out for the good. So it's going to be great tonight. Just, I, you need to get somebody, you need to call somebody right now. Tell them to tune in right now. Watch this right this minute because it will help your life. It, it'll transform your life. This book is radically transforming. And Brandon is just like we've been friends forever, but I can't wait for you to meet him tonight. And so, Pastor Carl, I'm so glad to see you tonight Pastor on Atlanta Rick, Live. Thank, thank you, you so much. It's good to be back. It's Amen. good to be back. And I, I, I love Atlanta Live, and your audience is amazing, and uh, they correspond with us a lot every time I'm on here, and I enjoy that. They're good folks, and it's good to be back tonight. Thanks for having us again. Amen. We appreciate y'all coming tonight. Amen. Pastor Carl, tell, tell us about this book. This, this I will. is great. I Amen. will. Yeah. Uh, my son, Brandon, he's an associate pastor up in uh, Cleveland, Alabama, just north of Birmingham, and he's a part of this, and I, I will bring him in in a moment, but he helped me do a lot of research for this because of his ministry, which your audience will hear about, uh, plus he actually wrote some material for it. But anyway, here's the thing. Pastor Rick, I, I've been the pastor of one church for 34 years on the Gulf Coast. Prior to that, I spent 10, 11 years in Florida law enforcement, two different sheriff's offices under three different sheriffs. So I've got a lot of life experience. And then of preaching and teaching and researching. And I approach my research and my book writing. I've written 12 now with major publisher. And I, ex I, I approach it kind of like a criminal investigation. I mean, I want to know the facts. I want to make sure everything ties together in context. I want to know what the witnesses say. I want to know what the experts say. So all of that's in here. But I write it so that anybody on the pew that likes to read at all, they, they, they'll get it. They'll be sucked into it. But I write it so that people will know the Word of God better, what's going on in the world around them, why things that are happening are happening, what the Word of God says, where it's headed, our part in it. Um, some of the stuff is pretty tough because we live in a crazy world, but a lot of it is very encouraging. It gives insight and it gives perspective. So having said that, so I've written 12. I've got my 12th one coming out in a few weeks, but this one's been out this year, and, and it's going crazy all over the world, but here's one of the reasons why. Not only does, and, I, and I'm going to tell your audience, I'm going to show you the book in a moment, the cover of it. I'm going to tell you the title, show you the cover, but not until I set it up first. So and some of your audience might be saying, well, why didn't you just tell us what it is? You'll see why in just a second. Yeah. So in 2019, I was writing this book. I've been doing a lot of preaching and teaching on this material, writing it. My son lives a lot of this material in his ministry. He was providing me information. He wrote some stuff for it because we knew this would help people. This would help the church. This would help people. Even if they weren't believers, it would help people either become believers and or to be delivered of demonic grips in these crazy prophetic times we're living in. So I'm writing the book, and I write it in 2019, January, February, March, April, May, June, July. I'm writing, researching. Uh, August is starting to be completed. Uh, last of August, I get it to the publishers. Um, they said, okay, we're going to start the editing process. We've got to do cover design, and, and, and we've got to come up with the title that matches the material the best. I had a working title, but they said, we're going to work on it. Good. So early, early fall of 2019, yes. they come up with the title. They come up with the cover design. The title matches a theme scripture that I was using and a theme throughout the book. And then they come up with the cover design. And then they said, we're going to release this in the first quarter of 2020, you know. And so then they said the date, all right, we're going to release it March 15th, 2020. Now, this was back in 2019 in the fall. I said, okay, good, because I've got another book going. I've got ministries. I'm going to Israel. I've got conferences to do, and I've got to get on with life. But I look forward to the book releasing, and then I'll do all the interviews and everything. All yes. right. So we round the corner. We go through Christmas. The world's going crazy. We round the corner to January. Next thing we hear from our government is that there's a virus out of China. 
uh, the Wuhan virus it was called, then it was finally called COVID-19, and we all know what that is now. Yes. And January and February, I was still flying in and out of airports and airplanes, and most everybody was, but they were getting tighter and tighter. There's a little more fear factor coming in. February, March hits. I'm not even thinking about my book because, I mean, the world's going crazy. I still have conferences and media to do. And then it's like, okay, we need to quarantine in place. We're going to shut down everything that's not essential. We need everybody to wear masks. And then some states and counties and cities and, and, and uh, began issuing mandates, some passing laws, some giving, you know, we'll fine you. We'll put you in jail if you don't wear a mask, if you don't do this, if you don't shut your church, if yes. you don't do, you know, shut your business that we tell you. All of this craziness was going on. Mm -hmm. And then my publisher sends me a reminder, your book's getting ready to release in just a few weeks. And I'm thinking, well, this is crazy. And then I thought, wait a minute. I remember what I wrote about. I remember what the cover is. I remember what the title is. Now I want the audience. Can you put that graphic up there? If you don't, I've got a, a book I can hold up. Yes. The title is Masquerade. Huh preparing for the greatest con job in history, a picture with a man holding a mask over his face. Huh. I, <laughs> it's, it's, it's deeper than that, though. You know what I write about in this book? I write about, from the scriptures, not having any idea about COVID-19, not knowing anything about what we were getting ready to go into. I write about government closing churches. Mm -hmm. I write about pandemics being a part of the fear of the last days and things that, that Satan masquerading. He's, he's using all kinds of things to trick and to deceive and to shut down the gospel, to shut down the word, to shut down churches, to destroy nations and, and, and psyche. Um, I write about how in the last days that there would be depression and epidemic and suicide epidemic and, and, and um, uh, addiction epidemic, all kind of addictions, yes. sexual perversion, pornography addiction, drug addiction, alcohol. Why? Because the Bible says all of this. Yes. And I know some people are saying, wait a minute, the Bible doesn't speak of those things. Yes, it does. In the English, you miss it sometimes, but in the Greek words, it literally says it. Brandon's going to open this up in just a moment. Yes. This is his whole ministry. But the point is, Pastor Rick, what, I mean, that, that was amazing. I'm writing what the scripture says. I think that I'm being given glimpses of the future. I don't claim to be a prophet, but I mean, I'm just writing. I've been preaching and teaching for almost 40 years, yes. and I can see where it's all heading. I'm writing about Satan and the demonic behind the governments. They're going to use it. They're going to attack the church, and, and, and they're going to use all kind of tricks and deceptions to bring their power upon the church. They're going to close it down, and then they're going to get people hooked on stuff, and it's coming towards this new world order, and, and we're going to come in and save you. And the Bible says all of this, and I'm writing about it, and I'm using that scripture where it says, and even Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light, yes, yes. okay? And even how the people of God could be deceived if that were possible, if we weren't careful. That's right. So I'm writing about all that, and I'm writing about all these things that will happen, and how it will come together, and then three months later, we're living it. Wow. And now we're still living it, and the book, when it came out, I was, I was slack-jawed. I was... I was shocked. My wife was. Well, we knew what the cover was. We had just kind of forgotten about it, and we're moving on. And the title, Preparing for the Greatest Con Job. Now, COVID-19 is real. That's not a con job. That's not fake. And people really die and all of that. But look at the evil powers of the world that have latched onto it to bring this spirit of fear that's yes. sweeping the planet, this spirit of depression and discouragement and anxiety and everything that comes from that. And the church closures and putting pastors in jail and fining Christians and shutting churches down. Chicago, in Chicago, they actually, I've got this documented in the book, threatened to bulldoze the churches if they didn't do what the government told them to do. Oh. That's not China, brother. That was Chicago. Hmm. And it happened in California, and it happened in Michigan, and it happened in Wisconsin, those kinds of things. And in states all around the United States, masquerade, preparing for the greatest con job in history. This book, God has made it prophetic. People are reading it all over the world. So how did you know this? And my answer is, I, we didn't know this. Hmm. We just know what God's Word says, and we could see where it was headed, and sure enough, here we are. Yes. Now, I got him to really do some deep research and some, and some writing and some uh, teaching in here about when I said, 
the Bible mentions in the book of Revelation, all the way to the book of Revelation, it speaks of drug addiction and pornography and sexual perversion addiction that leads to murders and thefts and, and nastiness, and it's global. See, we've always had this stuff since the flood, yes. since the garden, then the flood, but now it's globally pervasive because now we're the first generation to live in the age of instantaneous communication information systems. Huh. And so now this whole thing of shut the churches, shut economies, shut everything, everybody mask up, everybody go home, that swept the planet within a week. The whole planet was communicating together. Never before has that been possible. We're the first generation to see the return of Israel. We're the first generation, the 2800 year old prophecy, to see Jerusalem, the official capital. Then the first generation to see an explosion of technology connecting the world. And then in 2020, the first time in the history of the planet that on Resurrection Sunday, most of the world calls it Easter. I call it Resurrection Sunday. Yes. On Resurrection Sunday, you could hardly find a church anywhere in the world to go to for the first time since the church was born. Uh -huh. And Resurrection Sunday is the Sunday that celebrates the defeat of Satan. Yes, sir. This is the year Satan shut it down and said, you're not going to celebrate this. I'm thinking of Revelation 12, 12. Woe unto you, yes. earth, because Satan has been thrown down to you and he's filled with rage because now he knows his time is short. I'm telling you, we're living in 2020. Satan knows something that a lot of the church doesn't know. Yes, sir. That's and I, I, I mean, it's your show, but I was going to kind of hand it no, off to that, Brandon that, to that, the, let him talk about these addictions and the Bible speaks of it. Amen. Yeah, it, it's interesting. I, I've worked in the world of, of chemical addiction uh, for seven, eight years now, and, and specifically at Redeem Ministries where I am. We have a drug and alcohol rehab program, nine months long, in-house, one for men, one for women. I run our men's program. Right. And, and so, you, you, you know, I've made connections over the years of listening to stories of men, and you hear the same thing over and over again. And, and I began realizing just how, I always known it was a spiritual battle, but just how spiritual it is. And then you begin researching and digging, and you find out uh, uh, in Galatians chapter 5, uh, verse 18, 19 and 20 right in there it says the acts of the sinful flesh are obvious sexual immorality impurity debau uh, debauchery idolatry and witchcraft yes the word there for witchcraft in the Greek is it comes from a Greek word pharmakia which it was where we get our English word pharmacy from and the the literal definition of that word is the use or administering of drugs and, and, and then you go from there, like you said, you go through the book of Revelation. I think that word is used, or, or a derivative of that word, five times in the book of Revelation. Revelation 9, uh, uh, the very closing verse there, uh, in between the sixth and the seventh trumpet. So just before the return of Christ, Jesus says that after the sixth trumpet, he says, neither did they repent of, and he lists four specific sins. He says, sexual immorality, uh, witchcraft, murders, and thefts. Sexual immorality, the Greek word there is porneia, which is pornography. It's where we get the English word pornography from. Uh, uh, and then again, you have pharmakia, drug addiction mentioned there. All the way to the very closing words of the Bible, Revelation 22, Jesus says, outside the gates will be these. And he gives a list. And in that list, again, you see sexual, those that are sexually immoral and then those that have practiced witchcraft. And it's the same, comes from the same word. And in and, and, and Revelation, that word there, uh, it means to deceive uh, to, to deceive people, to drug people uh, into their illusions. Wow, wow. So you see where we are. We, we're, it opens and, up and demonic doors. Through COVID-19, you can just uh, put in any search engine and find out that addiction rates are through the roof. We're yes. seeing suicide rates through the roof, depression, anxiety, all of these things uh, which were already epidemics. And the pharmaceuticals given to that, depression and anxiety. That's exactly yeah. right. Uh, 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 overdose is the number one killer of age group 55 and under in the United States of America. Wow. The number one killer. And so then we have COVID-19 come along. You isolate people, tell people they can't have physical contact, lock yourself in your house. People lost jobs, finances, all of those things. So it just churches ramps all the churches closed, the one place they could get ministry and, and get answers from. And so it just ramps all of that back up. The enemy knows this. He yeah. understands we need physical contact, that I need to be able to look at you and see a smile on your face see and your get face. A, a handshake and a, and a hug and a, and a slap on the back and all of yeah. those. He understands understands that. That's right. And, and so this is all being used by the enemy as, as a con job on the entire planet. And now, and, and, and listen, I know people need to wear masks and I'm, I'm, I'm not speaking to that. I'm not a medical doctor or scientist, but think about all over the world is a gigantic masquerade. Huh. Yeah. Everybody's walking around with masks and designer masks and my mask is cooler than yours and you wear a mask or you're killing us. And it's just, everything revolves around masquerading. Huh. 
Satan is behind the curtain masquerading, pulling the strings of government, using addictions and, and sexual perversion. I mean, it's all right there in the Word of God. I wrote about it. There's the cover. There's the title. I even talked about the government shutting the churches down. Amen. Months before it ever happened, I knew nothing about what was around the corner. But this was the movement of God. Amen. That's, that's, man, I can't wait, wait to read this book. So we got about two minutes left and, and just a little while left. And, and but I, I know y'all are glad that Jesus is still the rock of ages, right? Amen. I mean, that's, our, that's our whole ministry. He's in control. And that's one thing we try to always encourage people and yes. say, look, the, is the world spinning out of control? Well, by the world standards, yes. Yes. But by the Word of God, it's unfolding just like the Word of God that's said like it would said. happen. Right. There would be chaos. There will be pandemics and disease and pestilence and, and, and all of these evils that we see being portrayed upon the world. The Word of God said this would happen. That's right. but, but we're to be the salt and the light. The yeah. church, we can't lose our saltiness right now. Exactly. It's time for the church to step up and be, be who we're supposed that's to right. be. And I am honored, as I know you are honored, that God trusts us to be the ambassadors that's during right. these prophetic times, the most prophetic Jesus. times since the first coming of Jesus Christ. And he has chosen us to be the Noahs and the lots of our day. Amen. And he said, just get, I know how to protect you. I know how to bless you. You just get out there, be the salt, be the light. In these days, that's why I've raised you up. We've been raised up for such a time as this. Amen. Well, well tell us, tell the people, the audience, everybody, and I know people are just waiting on to get this. How can we get the Masquerade book in your other books, but yeah. this one especially? Yeah. It, almost anywhere, but the easiest way is my website, my name, carlgallops.com. C-A-R-L-G-A-L-L-U-P-S. carlgallops.com, and I think it's on the screen. There's even an email address. You can email there immediately, okay. and we'll get it to you. An autograph copy. Well, an autograph if you want. And in the United States, free shipping and everything. I mean, we just we just bend over backwards to get this to you. And Man. if you want multiple copies, we drop the price and we, you know, yeah. Man, what a what a great book. I, this is a tremendous ministry, y'all got. I, I'm so grateful. This is good. This this is great. And, and I understand I, the great thing about it is, is you wrote that book before it all started. So this is a prophetic book. Yeah, this well, is we're working on. Just, right. just yeah. tremendous. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Well, well, we're just so grateful to have you on the show tonight. You touched a lot of people's lives, changed people's lives. We're going to swing it to music with Jason and April Parlor. And after this, the king of my heart and living proof. And then we're going to go straight into an interview with Errol O'Nall. Amen. God Amen. bless you. Amen. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. God bless Let the king of my heart 
that my God is real. Welcome, I'm Dr. Errol Onnell. Every time they have, I have the opportunity and honor to interview um, guests here at, uh, um, today, I have scripture that comes um, to mind. And the scripture that came to mind for this interview was Joshua. Joshua 1, where it says, Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise you that I, what I promised Moses. Wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given you. It goes on further to say, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. Be strong and have courage. It continues to go on. Study this book. And that's the Bible. Meditate it. On it, day and night, continually. And this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I am honored and so pleased to welcome Pak Oksu Maksanim to our set tonight. Welcome. Yeah. And may I call you Pastor Park? Yeah. Yes, of course. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm. It's so honored. I'm so honored to be with you. And all the way from Korea. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. And I know our visit. Our viewers have um, tremendous intrigue into the work that God is doing in your life. Yeah. Yes. And. You have founded the Christian Leaders Fellowship. It's an organization that trains and educates pastors. Just like in Joshua, there was a time that came for you, Pastor Park, to lead pastors. How did you start this? Tell us what kind of training and education you provide. Uh, so thank you very much for the good question. Uh, we need a certain uh, attitude of the heart when you go before God. Uh, the most important part of the Bible, when you talk about the Bible, is actually our thought and the thought of God, they are different. But just as he said to Joshua, he wants us to believe his word and come before him courageously. There are certain things that are important in the book of Joshua. Joshua sent two spies to the land of Canaan. Actually, they, got, they, were found, they were easily found out that they were spies. And they could have been arrested, they could have died easily. But these two spies, they went into the house of Rahab. Rahab saved them. And then this house happened to be on the city wall. Without passing through the city gate, they were able to come out of the city and come back to their camp. So it was God who prepared it before him. But when we started, in the first place, we had this fear in us. And secondly, when they went across the river Jordan, the water was there, but God stopped the water so that they could pass through. And thirdly, the, Jer the Jericho was very firm and strong, but God let them collapse. So without experiencing it, obeying to the word of God is not easy at all. But before experiencing it, the only way to go through it that's to believe the word of God. That is, when they read the word of God, they don't have to ask their thoughts. They have to run forward, uh, relying on the word of God. 
of God. That's when he can work. But however, our thought and his thoughts are different. And most people, as they live their spiritual life, they're bound by their method and their thought, and they don't follow the word of God. God said to David, When I see David, son of Jesse, he's a man, of, he's a man after my own heart. So David relying on God, he went against lions and also bears and wolves. Although Saul, he was also chosen by God, but he was afraid of Philistines and he trembled. So that's what it is talking about. That is, when you abandon our thought and rely on the word of God as it is and run forward, then God will surely work. And that's the kind of thing that, we can, that can lead us to our spiritual life. And that's what we share and we, that's how we train the pastor, pastors and ministers. Thank you. My pleasure. There are many 감사합니다. issues with young people, I've heard, that many, many presidents, presidents of nations and government ministers have sought your advice and counsel in the guidance of these youth. Yeah. Please tell us how your special methods are available in leading this youth. In 1995, I went to LA. There was this lady that I knew, and she told me to help her son. Actually, he was taking drugs, and he was carrying guns everywhere. The mother was always afraid. Yeah. Oh, you are my all, my son. I wanted to die many times, but I didn't kill myself because of you. Can't you stop living like this? Then the son said, Mom, don't tell me that. I don't want to leave, you know. I want to kill myself even, even more ten times a day, but it doesn't work easily. So that mother came to see me three times. I was living in Korea, but he's living in LA. So I couldn't help him at all. The third time she came to plead me to help him. So I thought about it and I wanted to take him to Korea with me. So I asked her, can I go, to, go back to Korea with him? Sure, you can take, you can take him with you, she said. So that's how I came uh, to Korea with him. He was wearing this baggy pants. I couldn't understand why he was wearing that kind of clothes. It was my first time seeing that kind of friend. But what I told him was, when Jesus sent the woman who was caught in the act of adultery, when, she, when Jesus sent her back, she, Jesus didn't say anything much. Jesus sent her back empty-handed. But in her heart, her heart was filled up with gratitude. I had to be stoned to death if you were not for Jesus. But Jesus loved me. He, she, he saved me. When she opened the door of her room, she was like, Oh, I'm in my room again. Oh, I can sleep in my bed again. In the morning when she wakes up, Oh, I'm still alive. In the heart of the woman, how can we take out that thankfulness out of her heart? She was filled up with this thankfulness in her heart. I've been educating and teaching prisoners for more than 10 years. Sometimes I can friendly talk to them, listen to their stories. But what is important is, now what Jesus did to this woman who was caught in the very act of adultery is that, why did she commit adultery? Because she had this lust? No, not so. Not everyone who has lost committed adultery. Because, because we, if we get caught, we're going to get killed. So we don't commit adultery easily. The reason why she committed adultery was, if I do really like this, I will get caught. caught. Nobody will know. So she trusted herself. In the prison, most time who commits crime and end up in prison, are the people who trust themselves. If I do it like this, I wouldn't get caught. Oh, why did I get caught this time? Oh, I left my fingerprint there. 
대부분 교도사는 그렇습니다. 자기를 믿는 마음이었어요. 여자는 예수님은 그 여자 마음에다가 감사한 마음을 Jesus filled this heart, her heart with gratitude. When her heart was filled with gratitude, there was no space for lust, fornication, evil heart in her heart. Just like when you're full of hamburger, you cannot take anything more inside. It's true you cannot easily take, uh, you know, fine drugs in Korea. I didn't tell him not to take drugs. I didn't tell him not to play gambling. But I tried to put this happiness in his heart. He passed six months with me in Korea and then he went back to LA. He turned into a new person. And his friends were surprised. So you don't want to take drugs anymore? No, you must be joking. We're going to see how many days we're going to last with that. You are going to take drugs, I know. But even after six months, he was, he was not taking drugs anymore. For the following year during summer vacation, 저희 교회를 찾아왔어요. 28 Korean Americans they came to Korea. They visited my church again. 약한달 동안 있었습니다. They spent one month in my church. 거의 대부분 변화. And most of them they went through the change. 그 이듬해는 and the following year 58명이 왔고 58 people came. 2001년에는 in year 2001 500명이 모였어요. About 500 people they gathered together. 그래서 우리가 IYF란 That's how we came to found this organization called IYF, International Youth Fellowship. Since then, we don't tell our youth not to take drugs, not to play gambling, you know, we don't, we don't say that. We just get together, we dance, we talk together, we do the Bible studies, we do it together. And most of the kids, when they spend one week with us, they forgot about drugs. That's how we came to found this organization, IYF, in 2001. And every year we organize this camp. And camp lasts two weeks. This year we couldn't organize it because of Corona. 어 저희들이 청소년 교육하는 걸 배우기 위해서 826명의 목사님들이 해외에서 왔었고 uh, Last year when we organized it in order to learn how we we'll educate our youth 826 pastors or abroad they came to Korea to visit us 총장님이 54명이 오셨고 And about 56 vice chancellor vice chancellors they came from many other countries 그 청소년부 장관이 28명이 왔습니다 And 28 ministers of youth around the world they came to learn together 우리 교육하는 걸 보고 And they came to see how we are doing our education here 그래서 많은 나라에서 우리 가진 마인드 교육을 받으려고 그렇게 하고 있어요 So many countries are accepting and also also adopting our mind education in our countries. So that's how we started this, our youth education. Thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure. And it's truly through the word of God that multiplication is what I hear that um, can only come through him and his power. And I know last May, Pastor Park, you held an online Bible seminar, which was televised on 276 TV stations all over the world. Only God. Um, to one billion people. There's never been such a tremendous work of God. So many people were able to hear this precious, precious word all at once. Can you share with us just a little bit of what this Bible seminar, seminar was all about? Actually, we couldn't organize our Easter uh, event in this year. This year, we did, we did it online. And about two million people they joined us online. I couldn't believe it. And afterwards, we organized our Bible seminar in May. And I wanted to share this word to consolate the people who are suffering from Corona. And in the month of May, many people died of Corona in many countries. And because most of the people who hear my sermons are Christians, when Christians they face death, the most important thing is, why can I go to heaven? That's, that's the issue. In year 2012, I went to Ghana. Ghana By the request of the first lady, I met the president John of Ghana Atomis then. His name was John Atamils. 
저에게 난 앞으로 5일 더 살기 어려울 것 같아. He told me that maybe he will last for five more days. 근데 내가 제일 믿음 좋은 대통령을 인정하고. He said that he's recognized as one of the most faithful president in his country. 주일 날에 웬만하면 난 교회를 갔다. And he made, uh, he made his, he did his best to go to Sunday worship every, every Sunday. 단거 다뭐 부족함이 없는데. Well, so everything is okay, but 나도 죄를 지었는데. He told me that he also sinned in his life. 죄 사함을 받지 못. And he said he could not receive a forgiveness of sin. 그 yet. 문제 때문에 대통령 심각하게 고민하고. So about that issue, he was very much worried. 제 대통령하고 같이 이야기를 하면서 so as I talk to him, 각하가 죄인인 걸 어떻게 알았어요? I asked him, Mr. President, how did you come to know that you are a sinner? 내가 죄를 지어서 죄인이 아니냐? I sinned, so am I not a sinner? 제가 그렇지 않다고 I told, I told him, no, it's not. 각하 깜짝 놀랐어요. And he was surprised. 왜 그러냐고? Why is that? 각하 어느 나라에 죄인이 자기 죄를 판단하는 나라가 있습니까? Uh, Mr. President, in no country, the sinner himself, he judges himself. 가나도 그렇게 안할 겁니다. I don't think so. I don't think people do that in Ghana. 죄를 짓는 사람 있고 There is a sinner 판결하는 분은 따로 there is a, 있습니다. There is someone else who judges the person who sins. 그렇습니다. 각하 죄도 Yes, it is the same for your sin as well. It's not up to you to judge yourself, but it's God who's going to judge you. Uh, God wrote this final verdict about your sin, but did you see that in the Bible? No, I haven't seen it before. You want to see it? Yes. Where is it in the Bible? It's in Romans. Chapter, it's in Romans. I, I read Romans 3 verse 23 for him. Actually, the passage in verse 23 and 24 is written in the structure of a verdict. 그 so through that passage, God, God is expressing His heart toward us. Uh, Mr. President, look at this. It says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But verse 24 it says, 됐다, Being justified. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. This is God's final verdict about your sin. Facing your death, you're afraid how you're going to be judged before God, right? And God is telling you in the Bible how He's going to judge you in the structure of verdict. God is a fair judge. He cannot call a sinner right. Righteous. But here God, He declared that you are righteous. Why are we righteous? In our eyes, we are sinners. But in the eyes of God, your sins are all transferred to Jesus. And Jesus shed His blood on the cross. And clearly, He washed your sins away. So in the eyes of God, He is declaring you that you are righteous. Justified. This is the verdict of God. This is not the word of Pastor Oksu Park. This is not a word of famous pastor. But this is the word of God. So God judged you. So President Jonathan Mills, he sinned. But he is justified. Because all his sins, through the blood of Jesus, they are all redeemed. But unfortunately, many people, they don't believe this word. Many people, they know Romans 3, verse 23, that they all have sinned, they know it. But the verse 24, which is followed by, they don't know this word a lot. And they still ask for forgiveness and pray, asking for forgiveness. Jesus would be sad. I wish your sins. I died for your sins. I was nailed for your sins. I want your sins. That is why in his verdict, he's declaring that we are justified. And afterwards, the president, he accepted it, and four hours later, he passed away. That day, he was so happy. Now I'm justified. Now I'm sanctified. I'm washed. I didn't do anything, though. But Jesus did it all for me. That's what he had. But that's what he said. 
So for the people who are afraid of Corona and who are dying of Corona, in order to consolate their heart and comfort their heart, I shared this word. And we didn't actually expect that much people, though. In the beginning, when the viewership went on, I didn't know it, but I didn't believe it in the beginning. But almost 300 TV stations, they televised it around the world. 뭐 칠십 여섯 개까지 방송하는 거, 그 다음에 또더 했다고 그러잖아요. I heard, that, I, I know it up to two hundred seventy six broadcast stations and there are more. 방송에 대해서 I heard. 정말 감사했고요. But I'm very, very grateful that God allowed us. 하나님께도 감사했습니다. And I was very grateful to God. 그래 특히 어떤 방송국에서 막 댓글이 올라왔는데. And in certain broadcasting stations, there were some comments that people sent. 나 이제 의로워요. And in the comments, people said, I'm now righteous. 그리케요. I'm justified. 난 아무것도 안 했어요. I'm only, although I didn't do anything. But Jesus was all my 믿어요. sins away on the cross. I believe. 막 그런 글들이 5천 글씩 막 6천 글씩. There were thousands of comments like this. 아침에 다 읽질 못했어요. In the morning, I couldn't read read it all. There were so many of them. 대충도 다못 읽었는데. So I just read it briefly. 감사했습니다. But I was very grateful before God for this. 성공 앞에 있는 분들. There are many people who are facing death. They, were fa they had this fear in their hearts. But through the cross of Jesus, their sins are all washed. When I heard that, I was so happy. And many people, I'm very thankful that many television, TV stations, they televised it for us. And I'm very, I'm very thankful for this interview today, too. Thank you very much, anyway. <laughs> Well, it's certainly been my honor to be present with a man of God who's obeyed God, who's been strong with God, and has been courageous for the word of God. And then, and only then, can God multiply to a minister in the name of Jesus. Thank you for all you do for his kingdom. We want to thank you, and it's an honor to be with you, Pastor Park, tonight for imparting those words and the word of God to penetrate the lives of people here. Thank you so much, and it's been a pleasure to be with you. And have a very good day. Morning. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm also grateful to all other broadcasting stations who televised our sermons. Thank you. I hope to see uh, all of them next time. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you very much. My pleasure. God bless you. Yeah. Praise God. Just want to just tell everyone how much we appreciate our great guests tonight, Pastors Carl and Pastors Brandon, the wonderful worship with Jason and April Parlor and the Pastor Park and, and the great rolling in. And, and we're just so thankful tonight that you watched us tonight on, on Channel 57. We're just so grateful. But I want you to know something. I know these are tense times. These are incredible tense times, perilous times. I want you to understand something. The Bible says, my favorite verse is Romans 5 and 8. God commends his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ loves you. Focus on the love of God. The love of God will change everything in your life. I don't care what's going on, what the news is saying. Focus that he loves you just like you are. Before the foundations of the world ever was, he loves you. And we're going to go on the last song tonight. You are good. Jason and April, God bless you. We love you. Amen.